So who among us, who among you, had on their bucket list living through a pandemic? Yes. Wow. How cool would that be? Let us self-isolate, work from home, eat all day long, and watch Netflix while a virus is ravaging the world. Well, I have to be honest. Maybe the eating and the Netflix for a couple of weeks, but a pandemic, a full-blown pandemic that has killed millions of people was not on my bucket list. But was I surprised? No. Like many me, like me in the field, microbiologists, virologists, epidemiologists, environmentalists, we were not surprised at all. So what went wrong? A lot. In the first few days of last year, when this brand new SARS-CoV-2 virus was the biggest talk, I was getting bombarded on my WhatsApp, my messages, phone calls from family and friends. Hey, what do you think? Do we have to be worried? What should we do? And initially I was like, no, no, I'm not worried. After all, this is a coronavirus. Most coronaviruses cause mild infections. It wasn't like the most dreaded of all respiratory infections, a person-to-person -person transmissible bird flu, which has a 60% mortality rate. But as the days started going, something inside of me was nagging at me. This is starting to look like, talk like, walk like, and move like a pandemic. What kind of virus is this? How deadly was it? How easily transmissible is it? Were just some of the questions that were racing in my mind. And then the official announcement by the WHO, a pandemic. Now that's when my inbox was bombarded by emails from my pre previous students, even some that had taken my classes like 10 or 12 years ago. Dr. K, oh my God, it's happening. We can still hear your voice in class saying a pandemic is coming. It's not if, it's just when the warning signs have been around us for years and decades many of us in the field have predicted this we have known that zoonotic infections those infections that can jump from animals into humans have always happened actually 60 percent of all infectious diseases have an animal host or reservoir, and 70% of all newly emerging infectious diseases, the ones in the last 20 plus years, have had a zoonotic origin. For example, HIV jumped from chimpanzees, Ebola from bats and small primates, H1N1 from swine, SARS-1, the older brother of SARS-2, from bats. MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Virus, and this guy is the cousin of SARS-2, from camels. We have all heard of rabies, West Nile, Zika, anthrax, all of which are zoonotic infections. Our biggest fear, however, as experts, has always been, what if another spillover event, the spilling of a microbe from an animal into human, created a deadly and virulent pathogen, one that is transmitted by droplets and air, one that is easily transmitted from human to human, 
one that is transmissible from asymptomatic individuals where nobody is immune to that can spread like wildfire and wreak havoc in every part of the body. Well, voila, we have not dodged the bullet. Somewhere, one encounter with an animal and then a sneeze and we are where we are today. We as humans have created this perfect storm. So was it really us? What did we do? Yes, yes, it was us. We have been selfish. As humans, our actions, our behavior, our decisions, our choices, mostly really thinking of me, 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 and myself, my health, and not as we should have been thinking. Everything on our planet is connected. Our health is connected to the environment, is connected to the health of the animals around us, is connected to the health of the climate, all as one. And this is what we know today as the one health concept, which is such an important concept to understand and really move towards. I wanna to share with you the only slide that I have today, which might explain better this one health triad, that connection of us with the animals, the health of the environment, the health of the climate. We must start thinking as an interconnected world on every level. What happens in Brazil, in the Middle East, in Africa, in India, or on a farm far, far away does not stay in that far, far away land. It comes back to haunt us. We have been hunting wild animals as trophies. We have been invading their remote habitats. We have been attacking the African bush to change it into farmland. We have encouraged deforestation. We are burning down the Amazon for ranching purposes. We have been living in close proximity with endangered and wild animals, such as wet markets. We have had them for pets that adorable gigantic iguana or that loving cobra that might squeeze me to death. We have been interacting with their bodily fluids, with their blood, with their feces, with their urine. We have been trading basically with different species that should, should not have been brought together. We have ignored fires, floods, hurricanes, earthquakes. We have truly been disengaged from nature, our nature. So yes, it is our actions and relationship to nature and the environment that allowed COVID-19 to happen not a genetically engineered or manufactured virus in a lab, and most likely not an accident escaping from a lab according to the WHO reports, and this still needs investigations, of course. The consensus among scientists is that this is a virus that jumped from wild animals, like so many before it. We cannot blame the bat, the snake, the pangolin, but we can reassess our relationship with them and each other. Honestly, by the time the first cases of COVID-19 were reported, the virus had already spread around the world through travel and mobility. 
But the humbling spread and speed magnitude of this COVID-19 pandemic has really been monumental, catastrophic, incomprehensible, and will be long-lasting. For those of us that remember, just after 9-11, the only biological attack on U.S. soil occurred, the intentional anthrax attacks. And for those of you that don't remember because you were not born, I hope that you have heard or, you know, basically read about it. Five people died and 17 people were infected. After that, we had huge resources, education, money, awareness was put towards understanding and preventing the intentional spread of bioterrorism weapons of destruction. We spent so much time, effort, and money on studying aerosolized biological weapons, and that was crucial. But we should have kept an eye on our daily activities, on our daily interactions with our planet, with our animals. Supporting one idea does not mean that we cannot investigate other threats that can create pandemics, possibly one that could be much deadlier than the one we are living through. At this point, COVID fatigue is real. We are all tired, exhausted. We cannot focus. We are sick of virtual learning and teaching, and trust me, I am. We are in a crisis, loss of species, more drought, more hurricanes, earthquakes, more antibiotic resistant bacteria, the biggest global health threat we faced pre-COVID. This is the time to turn all this COVID fatigue into one health action. Let that be our new norm. What have we learned? Besides that washing our hands several times a day was so important, who knew? What are we going to do? Ask yourself, what are you going to do? Are you willing to change anything? Are you willing to educate yourself and others? Spread the knowledge but make sure it is from reliable sources. We have a parallel pandemic of fake and false information. Work together, collaborate, no matter what your field is, we have so much work to do. We need to come together as individuals, as countries to defeat this pandemic and prevent new ones. Keep in mind, Many poor communities have real, and countries have real disadvantages when it comes to global resources. After this nightmare is over, and it will be over, we need to make sure that all countries have capabilities of diagnosing new infections, treating them, stopping the spread of new infections and sharing the information on new pathogens as soon as possible. We also need global involvement, better access to PPE, vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics. During this pandemic, even though it took a little bit of time, the whole world collaborated on the scientific level, on the funding level, on sharing information. Pharmaceutical companies collaborated. Let me repeat that so that it sinks in. Big Pharma collaborated. And because of this collaboration, we learned so fast and so much about this virus. The vaccines we have have not been rushed. 
The technology has been around for decades. Instead, what, cha what changed was that everybody teamed up. Everybody put billions of dollars. Everybody worked hand in hand and we succeeded. So we as humans allowed this pandemic to occur. Now let us create a future with a better plan and preparedness. If COVID has taught us anything, it is that human health is dependent on the health of our animals, ecosystem, planet, and climate. Minimize climate change. Avoid unnecessary contact with wild animals, decreasing zoonotic infections. Increase equitable access to knowledge and resources. Stop antibiotics in animal feed. Our new normal has to embrace nature, the environment, embrace animal habitats and their health, and bring it all back to embrace ourselves. A new pandemic is coming. My hope is that an interconnected world will be much better prepared. Thank you.